Hello, everyone. Welcome to our presentation. Our study is about non-invasive image-guided focused ultrasound neuromodulation for the control of post-operative hyperglycemia in the SWAN model. Post-operative hyperglycemia developed in patient after major surgery due to surgical stress. The hypoglycemia increase mobility and mortality and has been adequately addressed with traditional intensive insulin treatment. Glucosis neurons have been found in the polyhepatitis and superior mesenteric class. We recently found non-invasive ultrasound stimulation at polyhepatitis suppress the hypoglycemia in animal models of diabetes, mouse, rat, and swan. In this study, we'll test whether ultrasound stimulation can suppress POH. Our study was performed in two days. In day one, we measured the blood glucose, and then we did an HEC clamp with or without ultrasound intervention. And then we make the surgical stress by resection of the intestine. After closure, the animals were sent back to the home cage for recovery overnight. In the next day, we measured the blood glucose level at the same time. HEC is used to test intervention sensitivity. So by creating a steady state of the insulin and the glucose within the body. So the process is to clamp the blood glucose level to a predefined values with the insulin infusion at a constant rate. When both the blood glucose level the red, the black one is the blood glucose level. And the glucose infusion rate stabilized for 30 minutes. So we call this in the steady state. So this is a successful claim. And then we applied intervention. If the ultrasound intervention interrupts the steady state, it will cause the blood glucose change. And then we try to adjust the GIR to compensate the change to clamp the blood glucose level to the predefined values. In this case, we increase the glucose infusion rate. So that means the ultrasound stimulation will have an effect. So that's decreased the blood glucose level. Conversely, if the function, the folks ultrasound stimulation have a negative effect. So that means increase the, the blood glucose level. So we need to decrease the GIR to compensate for the effect. So our surgical stress model is adult peak. We did the following procedures, laparotomy, Negation of mesenteric vessels, internotomy, anastomosis. We use the ultrasound imaging to locate the targeted organs for the stimulation. This one shows the altar, and on top of this is the SMA, superior mesenteric artery. And the, the dash, the square, show the focused ultrasound stimulation areas. 
So that's the superior mesentery plexus. By using healthy acute peaks, we tested the acute effect of the ultrasound stimulation on the glucose metabolism. We stimulate protohaptis and superior mesenteric plexus, or both of them. So this shows stimulation of the superior mesenteric plex have a bigger increase in the GIR. So the GIR increase indicates the ultrasound stimulation decreased the blood glucose level. That means it can be effective for hyperglycemia control. Well, there were not significant changes with stimulation superior mesenteric plaques only, or when they stimulation both the protohaptase and the SMA. And then we test the effect of the ultrasound stimulation in the superior mesenteric plexus for 30 minutes in the injury models. For the shame control, these pigs experienced the same injury, but without ultrasound power output. The claim showed the acute effect of the shen box ultrasound stimulation. So out of the three peaks, one peak shows increased GIR. So that means the shen peaks have some effect. It's a variable effect. When we see the long-term the next effect of the shim stimulation, that before injury and after injury, we found there is the increase in the blood glucose levels after injury. Also, for this case, is the shim controls. And then we measured the effect of glucose changes for ultrasound treated injured animal. In these animals, we stimulate the SMA for 30 minutes. And we found that out of the four animals, two animals shows a GIR increase. So that means ultrasound have the effect to suppress the glucose. And one peak shows decrease. So that suggests ultrasound elevated the blood glucose levels. And one without much change. But when we see the glucose change before injury and the next day after injury and the treatment, we found there is a significant increase after this treatment and injury. Our take-home message is focused ultrasound stimulation as a superior mesenteric artery have a stronger effect than stimulation that put haptics. And surgical stress induced the hyperglycemia. Well, in the small number of animals, the focused ultrasound targeting at SMA caused the higher hyperglycemia than the shame stimulated animals. This is out of our expectation, but at only we have four peaks, more animals needed to be validated this result. Thank you for coming. And please let me know if you have any questions. Yeah.